Welcome to part two of our conversation with Jeff Walker. Tell me more about uh, your, you know, your kind of your journey uh, as you know, you started working there. That's amazing. You get a, a lot of up close and personal experiences with the dead. Are there other locations or experiences that you've uh, dived into uh, as you've continued on? Yeah. So um, probably the coolest location uh, aside from, you know, working at the Bell that I've been to is the Ohio State Reformatory, also known as Mansfield Prison uh-huh. in Ohio. Um, I was like, gosh, what more can I say about this place? The place is massive. It's, you know, 250,000 square feet. Um, there's a estimated 155,000 inmates that have passed through there at one time, uh, all made up from 18 to 30-year-olds. Wow. And, um, I mean, yeah, it's, as soon as we got there, I was just kind of like, holy crap, <laughs> this is, this is massive. And it looks like a so gothic. The activity had to be, um, yeah, just massive there. I mean, and I mean, and... if you look at the images of the, of the building, if you ever had to say, uh, draw me a haunted house. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man. Yeah. Like I work at a haunted attraction here in Fort Wayne myself. So I'm like. And it's, that's just my personality. Like I'll drive by somewhere. I'm like, huh, you know, this used to be, uh, there's a place here in Fort Wayne called Byron health center. Uh-huh. And all these people have all these different stories about this place. Um, cause that's where they keep like the men- mentally handicapped and all those. So I was like, you know what? That'd be a really cool place for a haunted house. You sure. know, charge 50 bucks a head to get it. Yeah. Only half of your actors are actually real. <laughs> exactly. That's what so I, I only have to be uh, half of them. That's what I always find interesting, especially I've had people on that they, you know, they run the a haunted attraction in the legitimate haunted place that's investigated the rest of the year. And it's always yes. a fun question of how often do people tell you that they've experienced something and they thought it was really cool and it really wasn't part of the attraction? <laughs> you know? I mean, we've had our. Over at um, Hysterium here in Fort Wayne, we've had some of our own actors that sometimes won't go and work in a certain room because they've had experiences. Yeah. Um, I work in an elevator, creepy enough. Uh Uh-huh. Sometimes I've had the doors open and close on me, and they are ran by um, compressed air. So there's a a switch you actually have to switch open for these doors open and close. So I'm like, okay, that was interesting. Yeah. Um, But this all kind of happened before i started attending the bell mansion and whatnot so i'm like all right now i can actually go out there and try to figure this out because now i have some knowledge and a little bit of experience to go hey now i can try to see who's in my elevator yeah well tell me more about the reformatory and uh, obviously you know it's been around for quite some time give me some of the history of it and and how uh what sort of experiences you've had there Oh man! So, uh, as as far as history goes, um, I'm just trying to remember how how far it went back. I just remember from hearing on the history tour because I think the most of the time I was on the tour, I was kind of like looking at this building and trying to pay attention to what um, the uh, tour guide was telling us. But to know that they typically would have four inmates to a cell. Um, and those cells are not big there. It's probably really not any bigger than my bathroom, probably uh-huh. a little bit smaller. Um, cell 13 there, uh, John, I believe a gentleman named Jonathan Lockhart, uh-huh. um, actually burned himself to death in his cell. Oh, wow. Um, and apparently there for the longest time, his flesh was still kind of, uh-huh. kind of glued to the walls. So I'm like, well, I definitely don't want to go in there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then there's one time that they had some overcrowding issues. So they shoved 250 men up into this. It's a fairly sized, uh, fairly good sized attic. They put 250 men up there. So there's a bunch of killing and just um, a lot of bad, a lot of bad history there. And especially in the winter time, sometimes these cell blocks, um, they would freeze up. So you would see... Now, icicles on them and whatnot. So they, so for someone to burn themselves alive in their cell block really had to tell you the atmosphere there. 
Yeah, I mean, if you're willing to go to that length, I mean, that would be probably the one of the most painful ways to go. Yeah, they, I mean, they had to take some other people out of their blocks and kind of go wash them down just because of the stench of, you know, someone burning themselves yeah. next to the, you know, the cell block next to you. My gosh. Yeah, that's just utterly horrific. Um, tell me about, you know, some of the when, when you got in there and, and like when you walked in the doors for the first time, what kind of feelings are going over you? It was kind of overwhelming. Um, just to know everything that went on there and kind of history. Um, I know it was on, the, that's where the movie Shawshank Redemption was filmed. Uh -huh. And uh, just like I said, just to know all the history and just how many stories have came through there of some of the most you know infamous um, inmates of that time, you know, have all passed through there at one time or another. And it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely an experience. I definitely want to go back soon and, and do more investigating. Uh, definitely not a cheap place to investigate by any means, but totally worth it. And they have many challenges there um, that you can actually do when you're there to investigate. And uh, one of them that I did was the East Cell Block Challenge. And uh, probably even as being a scare actor, probably the most one of the most intimidating challenges that I've ever done. So basically what you do is you go on around this entire East Hill block, which took me a little bit over four minutes to do. I was kind of speed walking, not gonna lie. Uh-huh. So you're in the dark. I had a body cam on me. It's actually gonna be posted on my Facebook page. And I had the night vision body cam on me. So I had to kind of face towards me, also kind of faced out to tell people, no, I'm like, hey, uh, I can't see a thing here. So the only light source I have is just the infrared on this camera. Yeah. And going past every single cell block, it just, just kind of felt that someone was constantly like watching you go by or staring you down. Um, and the further that you went down the, uh, down the block, the darker that it got. And I had a couple experiences there um, of somebody, they had to be obviously tell of me, I'm only like 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 uh -huh. They had to be like over six feet and they just felt like they're just kind of breathing down on the back of my neck. Yeah. And so I had stopped with this camera and I was like just a couple of sub blocks back. I felt like just this very heavy breathing on my neck like they did not want me to be there at all. It's interesting. I mean, how much when you have that sort of experience, obviously you're in a very ominous building. You, you know some of the history of the types of people that were in there. How much of situations like that do you think is legitimately when you're having those feelings that there is somebody there watching you or your mind really, you know, it, it's putting the pieces together that you're in this atmosphere it, your mind subconsciously may think, look out, there may be those type of people here. And then that creates the feeling. And maybe it's not something paranormal in those sort of situations. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, if it's, you know, like myself or, or maybe, you know, everybody's minds works different. Yeah. So if you're going in there feeling overwhelmed, very emotional, um, and also could have what happened to you that day, can definitely, I think, play a huge part in the experiences that you get in such a massive building like that, aside from the paranormal side of it. Yeah. Um, I know when I first walked in there, I was a little nervous at first because I'm like, all right, I've only investigated a handful of places, but nothing to um, this nature. So I wasn't sure what to experience. I'm like, all right, hopefully there's nothing demonic here. There's nothing dark, nothing that's going to attach to me and follow me home. So, and that's probably, we like most people who have, like I said, like myself, who have not, you know, been in, investigating for a long time. And you're just have all of these questions running through your head. It's like, all right, now I just understand that, hey, I just need to stay calm, investigate, and then just, you know, if I have an experience, you kind of share it with the group. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I did. So now I've kind of have a 
uh, step-by-step process when I go and investigate on how I, you know, try to file something that I, that I claim to experience. And then if there's any sort of way that I can debunk it, you know, obviously mentioning like the feelings or something I had going in there, if that's playing a huge factor or not. Yeah. I mean, it's always interesting. Do you think a place like that, like the Bell Mansion is more likely to have something negative in it that's uh, you know that is demonic that is not of of this world it's not just a an asshole uh ghost it, it's something much darker than that because of the uh the setting and, and what it was and who was in there um i mean it's really hard to tell like i said I've, you know being there for so many months and you know obviously talking with you know many other people we've had you know mediums come through there um but there's nothing You know, unless somebody brings something in, like when we have people do overnight public or private investigations, we have them saying waivers like, hey, go doing seances, candlelight ceremonies, you know, don't bring any chalk in, try to (laughs) put any emblems down there in the basement um, and those kinds of things. Do people Um, always follow those rules? Do people follow those rules all the time? I mean, I know, it. you know, all, all these types of locations have these, you know, this is what we expect of you behavior wise. But when when you're not if you're not there monitoring every single person, which most aren't, um, how often do you think that those sort of rules get broken? And yeah, it probably does happen all the time. Yeah. You know, people are like, hey, I just want to come here and investigate. Yeah. So I just all they're asking me to do is sign a waiver. But that's only proof they have of me that's saying this is what I'm going to follow. Yeah. But, you know, you just try to hold people accountable and. You know, we tell them before them, like, hey, the spirits here are kind of like our family. Yeah. We take care of them. They take care of us. And we hope you guys will also do the same and kind of respect them. Yeah. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like the the energy or the entity or whatever you were near was a bit too much? And you you really wanted to just, okay, I've I've gone. I I put my toe in the water too far. I'm I'm out of here for this one now. Yeah. Um, it was, it actually happened up on the, uh, the third floor of this, of the mansion. And, um, there had been times where like, I think there's just too much energy going on in one room and, you know, my chest was kind of hurting, um, maybe just a tad, tad bit of a headache started to go on too. So I'm like, all right, I don't think this is where I'm supposed to be right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if it was just just because there's a lot of energy in the room or if there's some sort of way that I was feeling that day that could have caused it. Um, but this also was when I started, you know, learning to investigate. And I think it probably have been like my third or fourth time there. And so I think it was a little bit much for me. Um, so now I learned to, you know, know how to calm myself and, you know, kind of bring my myself back to reality. Is it something where if you were to feel that way again, would you would you walk away or would you try and, and push through it more? I would try to push through it, definitely, um, because if I'm, you know, let's say if I'm going to, you know, back to Ohio State Reformatory, and if I'm investigating there on a weekend, um, you know, where it's, it's quite expensive, I'm like, you know what, I just need to push through this because maybe there's a reason I'm supposed to be in here yeah. to try to figure something out or try to overcome something. Um, so I kind of think that if I'm having some sort of feeling that way, it's not always going to come past me as something that's dark or demonic or something like that. Um, so there just could be a lot of energy in the room and our bodies can react in different ways. That wraps up part two of our conversation with Jeff. A big thank you to him for joining us on the program today and sharing his experiences with us. And thank you to you for supporting the show and keeping us on the air. We wouldn't exist without it. Until next time for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.